Good afternoon. Uh, the Secretary General and the Prime Minister will make short introductory remarks and then they'll have time for a couple of questions. Secretary General. Prime Minister, uh, dear Charles, it's uh, great to have you back here at the NATO headquarters and uh, it's also a great honour for me to be able to receive you here uh, because uh, Belgium has been so instrumental in uh, constructing and uh, building this uh, building. This is now a modern home for a modern alliance and uh, you have been hosting NATO since 1967. Uh, but now you are not only hosting NATO, but also hosting NATO in this very beautiful and stunning uh, building. Um, we have uh, uh, implemented or we have conducted the move and uh, now uh, 4,000 people, more than 4,000 people work uh, in this uh, building. And uh, we are very pleased uh, with uh, the fact that we have been able to move in and start to work in uh, in the new headquarters. The space we are in now, uh, the Agora, is uh, the size of two and a half football pitches. And we have discovered uh, that this beautiful space is the perfect place to watch the beautiful game. After work, staff follow uh, the World Cup um, here at the giant TV screen just behind us. It's one of the many benefits of uh, being part of uh, NATO. Uh, so, Charles, I uh, know that you will watch the game uh, tomorrow, and uh, I uh, wish you and the Red Devils uh, tomorrow all the best. Um, um, Norway, my country, didn't qualify, uh, but uh, 10 uh, NATO allies are uh, part of the games, uh, have qualified, so uh, there, are, there are actually quite good chances for that the NATO ally uh, will uh, become a uh, world champion. We um, thank you for being the host nation for NATO, but we also thank Belgium for um, contributing in many different ways to our shared uh, security. Uh, Belgian troops uh, serve in our rescue support mission in Afghanistan, uh, helping train Afghan forces fighting terrorism. Your soldiers serve with the NATO's battle group in uh, Lithuania and uh, Belgian jets. Uh, they uh, keep uh, the skies over the Baltic Sea region safe by participating in the NATO air policing mission there. During our meeting, we discussed uh, the upcoming NATO summit here in Brussels next month. Uh, we are going to make important decisions there on deterrence and defence, higher readiness of forces. We will decide uh, to step up uh, the fight against terrorism, uh, including with a, a training mission in uh, Iraq. We will also uh, decide to uh, 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 continue with the um, funding for the Afghan uh, uh, forces, armed forces. And we will also decide to strengthen our cooperation with the, the European Union. I'm planning to sign a joint declaration with uh, President Juncker and President Tusk, outlining the vision for how to strengthen uh, the cooperation between NATO and uh, the European uh, Union. And I welcome Belgium's leadership on uh, all these issues. Leaders will also uh, discuss uh, burden sharing. Uh, in Wales, at our NATO summit there in 2014, we decided to stop the cuts to gradually uh, uh, increase defence spending and then uh, move towards spending 2% of GDP within a, a decade. And the good news is that uh, European allies uh, and Canada have turned a corner. All allies have stopped the cuts. All allies have started to increase and more allies spend 2% of GDP on defence, and the majority of NATO allies have now put forward plans on how to reach 2% within a decade. I welcome uh, the progress we also see in Belgium. Uh, Belgium has stopped uh, the cuts uh, in defence spending, and we've also seen uh, some increase. Uh, but I encourage Belgium to uh, do more uh, to increase defence spending and invest in new capabilities, both in new warships and in new fighter planes. 
We must continue to invest more in defense to keep our citizens safe. So uh, uh, I'm looking forward to the summit. Uh, this is a summit with a lot of substance, important decisions uh, on deterrence, defense, the fight against terrorism, cooperation with the European Union and many other issues. And once again, uh, thank you for all the support uh, you give to the Alliance, both for being a host nation, but also through your contributions to NATO missions and operations. Welcome. Thank you. First of all, I would want to, to thank you, Jens, for this uh, meeting, this important meeting for, for me. Thank you also for the support of the NATO for the Red Devils. And I am sure that uh, with your support, we will win this important competition in, in Russia. Um, uh, now, it's important today to have this occasion to, to discuss a, a few important topics for the future. P point one, I would want to confirm that uh, Belgium, my country, we want to be a loyal and strong partner of the NATO. We are really happy to host uh, you. One year ago, we were together in order to open this new um, building, and it's certainly the symbol of this uh, important transatlantic cooperation. Um, je voudrais maintenant m'exprimer en français et ensuite en néerlandais pour mettre en évidence un certain nombre de points importants. Uh, to highlight a number of points for Belgium. First of all, I made the commitment in the name of the Belgian government to stop, in my term in office, constant decrease in defense spending, decrease for more, for more than a decade. We've respected that commitment. We've honored that commitment. We stopped the cuts in defense spending because we want to reaffirm our commitment to peace, stability, defense, and security. We've also tried to launch a strategy for investment, for defense investments, because we want to be in line with the three objectives, mobilize more means, mobilize more efforts to re-increase investments and to develop operational capabilities because we want to be involved in the field. Our troops are present in several NATO-led operations, and we will be even more so in the future through the commitments that we are making, be it in Afghanistan, in Iraq, uh, to name but a few. Finally, I also had the opportunity of telling the Secretary General of NATO the procedures underway in Belgium with significant investments for the replacement of our F-16s. We've been present for many years on many operational theaters in close partnership with NATO with our F-16s, uh, but the Belgian government has decided to replace these F-16s. Last week, we decided to start a procedure for the replacement. So we have a, a group of experts that have been mandated by the Belgian government and who have to analyze three main points, three very important points that will be dealt with at the level of the Belgian government. First of all, prolonging or not the F-16. This was a commitment made by Parliament. Uh, a number of surveys, research are present, are available. We'll have to decide whether we prolong the life of those F-16s. Secondly, we have triggered a process called RFGP, which is a, a technical procedure to compare the different quotes that we received. Two quotes were tabled to us. Reports are being produced as we speak on these two offers for replacement solutions. Uh, the government is reviewing those, our experts are reviewing those. And outside of that procedure with the two quotes, there is a French proposal that we've received and that has put on the table the possibility of a strategic partnership with Germany. And that proposal is also under review at the government as we speak. So we would like to honor our commitment. We would like to put the strategic vision into practice Practice. And this RFGP procedure is foreseeing a decision at the latest in October. So this is the timeline we're working on as we speak. Next to that, decisions in principle are being made now for maritime investment, new frigates, for instance. We're also looking at the acquisition of drones or armored rolling stock. Partnership is already underway with France, for instance, on this particular issue. 
daar is generaal van de NAVO te delen. Uh, en dat betekent dat uh, de procedure dat we in de schooladministraat uh, vorige week hebben bevestigd, een mandaat gegeven aan de weggroepen om drie punten te bekijken, om desgevallend daarna de kans te geven aan de regering uh, beslissingen te nemen. Eerste punt, uh, de uh, optie van de niet-verlenging van de F-16 of de verlenging van de F-16. We hebben daar heel veel informatie gekregen, heel veel debatten in het parlement uh, gehad daarover. Maar we moeten nog uh, dit punt in uh, de schoolministerraad bekijken, punt 1. Punt 2, de procedure in het kader van de RFGP, een objectieve procedure, dat is de keuze voor een transparante procedure, met twee aanbindingen uh, die geldig zijn en uh, waarover we een paar uh, formele informatie, een formele analyse de laatste dagen hebben gekregen die gedeeld zijn tussen de experten uh, van de regering. En punt 3, een voorstel, een Franse voorstel voor een samenwerking met België, maar ook met Duitsland. We moeten ook dit voorstel bestuderen. Ik heb ook vorige week herhaald, ik bevestig dat de RFGP-procedure leidt uh, tot een beslissing uh, voor ten laatste, ten laatste uh, oktober. Dus uh, we zullen onze engagement Honoreren. We zullen kiezen voor een herinvestering in onze defensie, in onze capaciteiten. En ik heb ook uh, toegevoegd dat uh, wat de andere materialen betreft, bijvoorbeeld de fregatten of uh, andere materialen in samenwerking met uh, Frankrijk, uh, we uh, belangrijke stappen hebben al gemaakt om geloofwaardig, om geloofwaardig te zijn en om onze woorden te uh, respecteren. Et enfin, je voudrais simplement encore dire un mot. And Dans un moment, one last word. le multilatéralisme At est a mis sous pression. Where multilateralism is under pressure. Depuis les deux grandes guerres mondiales, multilateralism, since the two world wars, in many fields, in the field of security and stability, has allowed it to, has allowed us to have tangible peace dividend, security, thanks to this very strong transatlantic alliance. Well, let me reaffirm how much Belgium wishes to be a committed partner for multilateralism within NATO. Belgium will be a member of the Security Council of the United Nations between 18 and 20, 2018 and 2020. And in many issues pertaining to security, sustainable development, climate change, change, stability, fight against poverty. In all these areas, we will have a word to say we will be of those who believe that multilateralism is an added value in a win-win strategy, a win-win strategy for all of us who are committed to it in order to forge a safer world, a more stable world, and a more prosperous world, which is, in a nutshell, NATO's values as established by the founding members, including Belgium and that I wish to defend and reaffirm myself in the name of the Belgian government. Thank you. We have time for a couple of questions. Uh, Le Soir, gentlemen there. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Philippe Renier, Journal Le Soir. I have a question for the Secretary General um, regarding the, the future uh, declaration EU-NATO. Uh, do you expect in this declaration that there will be um, a strong recognition by the NATO side, despite uh, also the US side, that the, the, pro the progress that the EU has made in terms of uh, defense um, makes a real contribution to the fair burden sharing of uh de collective defense. Et j'ai aussi une question pour le Premier ministre. Euh, Est-ce que, malgré, enfin, après ce que vous venez de dire sur le multilatéralisme, vous attendez que ce soit le président Trump Minister. avec le style particulier qu'il affectionne President Trump a euh, particular style. Euh, Do you believe disons, that at the summit he will be pushy towards Belgium, as Belgium seems to be uh, lagging behind when it comes to uh, investment and defense spending? Thank you. I believe that the declaration I will sign with uh, President uh, Juncker and President uh, Tusk uh, will uh, state clearly that we welcome uh, the EU efforts uh, on defence. Uh, because uh, stronger EU efforts on defence uh, will uh, uh, strengthen uh, NATO. Uh, it will uh, help to develop capabilities, increase defense spending, addressing the fragmentation of the European defense industry. And by doing so, so it will strengthen uh, Europe, the European Union, but also NATO. We have to remember that more than 90% of uh, the people living in uh, 
the European Union, they live in a NATO country. So it's very hard uh, uh, to strengthen uh, European uh, defense efforts without uh, at the same time not strengthening uh, NATO. Um, uh, at the same time, it is important to underline that, uh, which has been stated again and again from EU leaders uh, and European leaders, that uh, stronger uh, uh, EU efforts on defense uh, will not replace or uh, compete with NATO. It will complement NATO. Uh, and uh, of course, NATO is, uh, uh, is the alliance that can provide collective defense for uh, uh, both uh, North Atlantic, also for Canada and the United States, but also for European NATO uh, allies. Uh, we have to remember that after Brexit, 80% of uh, NATO's defense uh, expenditure will come from non-EU allies. Uh, three of the four battle groups we have deployed uh, in the uh, Baltic region will be led by non-EU allies, the United States, uh, uh, Canada and the United Kingdom. Uh, this is partly about money, but also about geography. In the north, you have a non-EU ally, Norway and Iceland. In the south, you have Turkey. Uh, in the west, you will have US, Canada and the United Kingdom. And it's very hard to uh, have a credible defense of Europe without the capabilities, the resources, but also the geography that non-EU allies provide. So we will welcome uh, EU efforts of, uh, uh, on defence, but uh, uh, something uh, that complements, not uh, compete with uh, NATO. And of course, it's also extremely important to have coherence when it comes to development of capabilities and the fullest possible involvement of non-EU allies. But uh, this is something which has been stated clearly both from the European side and from the NATO side, so I'm absolutely confident that we'll be able to continue to work together uh, and respecting uh, each other. Pour répondre à la, à la question, premier point, to answer your question, first of all, we decided to stop systematic defense spending cuts even before Donald Trump was elected U.S. president. It was an agreement at the level of my government to relaunch a defense strategy to re-enhance our security and to be a reliable NATO partners. partner. And when, we look, when you look at the metrics, there's three important metrics, the amounts in terms of contribution, as a percentage of GDP, but also capacities and capabilities. And there's two of these three metrics where we are the good pupil. Yes, there is one we still have to improve further. And this is happening through the decisions we're making right now. Some are in the making. Some decisions have already been made in terms of reinvesting in our defense. So I have the feeling that Belgium is putting into practice the commitments that it has made. And I my task is to convince Belgium, as I do the government and Belgian citizens, that investing there. Uh, Mr. Secretary General, uh, for any country that wants to buy new fighter planes, in your view, what should be the criteria to make that decision? And perhaps also, uh, misschien ook dezelfde vraag aan de premier: spelen geopolitieke criteria daarbij ook een rol? So we welcome in NATO that uh, Belgium has decided to modernize its uh, air forces. And uh, uh, that is important for Belgium, but it's also important for uh, uh, NATO. And uh, of course, uh, uh, NATO have seen uh, many times the importance of the Belgian Air Force. Uh, they have participated in NATO missions and operations, uh, air policing in the Baltic Sea. Uh, but also in other missions and operations, uh, air policing in the Benelux area together with the Netherlands. So uh, uh, I have met Belgian pilots, professional, dedicated uh, pilots, so this is important also for the whole uh, alliance. What is important for NATO is that, uh, uh, the, uh, that Belgium uh, acquires uh, new, modern, capable, uh, planes which are interoperable with uh, the NATO systems and other NATO air forces. 
but it's not for NATO to uh, point at any specific platform or, or any specific type of fighter jets as long as they are modern, capable and fully interoperable with the NATO systems. But we leave to the nations to decide exactly what kind of plane. Okay, ik ben zeer duidelijk. Ik heb de procedure herhaald en uitgelegd en we zullen de procedure, de procedure volgen. Dat is een belangrijke keuze voor België met de belangrijke financiële effecten. En we moeten de beste beslissing nemen. En dat betekent dat we hard werken om de verschillende analyses te maken om in staat te zijn met een volledige informatie, een goede informatie, de beste beslissing te kunnen nemen. Maar ik herhaal dat we een loyale partner van de NAVO zijn en willen blijven. En daarom hebben we principiële beslissing genomen, niet vandaag, maar de laatste jaren, voor een herinvestering voor onze defensie, conform met onze internationale engagementen. Ik zal het niet in Frans om te repeteren de hetzelfde te zeggen. En ik zal het zeggen in het Nederlands voor de secretary-general. To have translation. We are making, uh, taking steps to follow the procedure, the procedure to choose the destiny of the F 16s. But many years ago, even before Donald Trump was elected, actually, we decided to reinvest in defense. And procedures have either been started or decisions have already been made. Uh, for the Navy, for the issue of the frigates, we're doing a partnership with the Netherlands that the decision is made. There's a procedure underway for the acquisition of new drones, and there are also procedures for uh, armored rolling stock. And there is, of course, the big topical issue, the F-16 dossier. And um, I want the government to make the right decision at the right time with the best possible level of information. You have understood that for NATO, what is important is that the choice that we make is part of interoperability at NATO level between the different air forces, and this is one of the criterion that we will respect. A question for Mr. Stoltenberg. Uh, in Belgium, some people are afraid that the decision on the replacement of the fighter jets will be postponed until after the election, so until second half of 2019. Would that be a problem for NATO? The important thing for NATO is that uh, Belgium invests in new, modern, capable uh, uh, aircrafts and uh, fighter jets. Uh, of course, we would like to see that uh, decision as soon as possible, but uh, uh, whether that decision is taken uh, in this summer or later on this year uh, is not uh, important for uh, NATO. One last question, Anna Dolu, lady in the second row. Yeah. A uh, question for Secretary General. Uh, following the resolution of the name conflict between Greece and now uh, North Macedonia, can we expect an announcement of a new NATO member in the upcoming summit? What you can expect uh, is that the NATO summit uh, will uh, invite uh, the, the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia uh, to start accession talks uh, with uh, NATO. And then, uh, given that the uh, uh, agreement between Skopje and Athens is uh, uh, finalized also with a referendum in, uh, in, uh, in the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, then uh, we will uh, also uh, be able to uh, invite uh, uh, the country to be a full uh, member of the alliance. So I am optimistic. I hope and expect that the summit will make this decision. And then, of course, I hope that there will be uh, a majority uh, in the referendum that supports the agreement, uh, because that's uh, an historic opportunity uh, to join NATO. Uh, and uh, uh, the people in the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia should uh, seize this opportunity and vote yes, and, uh, and then become uh, members of uh, NATO. Thank you very much. This concludes this press point. Thank you.